Hello to all of you out there in this great big world of social media. Yes, this is your brother Dana coming to you from the city of Chicago. Shalom, shalom to all of my precious chosen people of the Most High Yah, uh, you who are the true Hebrews. And if any of you watching this video are um, wondering who I'm talking about, well, in this nation, their bywords, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, have been black, African-American, colored, and various other uh, words. Um, but however, their true identity is they are the true chosen Hebrews, children of the Most High Yah, God. Um, you know, let me, let me share this because I know even the title and then the message that I wanted to bring forth today is going to stir up some anger amongst my white evangelical family members. Please understand that I am not your enemy. I know you view me as your enemy, but you view me as your enemy because you're unwilling to really um, acknowledge the enemy that you are fighting, which is the white supremacy, the fear, the hate of our black brothers and sisters, and all of that that lies within your own heart. And so when I bring forth this information, whether you acknowledge it as truth or not, it stirs you up and you now dislike me. You have all kinds of names for me. But I wish you would understand that I am not your enemy. And the words that I'm bringing or the messages or the message that I'm proclaiming to you um, isn't really your enemy. It is your freedom, it is your life, it is your deliverance, it is your joy. But because of your fear and your hatred, fear of losing white supremacy to the people that you hate, what happens is that your heart rejects this truth. And you want to remain in ignorance because ignorance is more comfortable for you to live in than to acknowledge the truth and repent from that which lies in your heart against our black brothers and sisters or anybody for that fact that you see may try to remove white supremacy. So I, I really wanted to say this clearly that you know Jesus did not come for you white evangelicals. He did not come for strangers and or aliens. But the word makes it very clear in John uh, chapter 1 verse 11 that he came for his own and so the only reason why the rest of us get an opportunity to join in his work is because his own rejected him but he didn't come for us so Believing that God, you know, entrusted us white evangelicals, us white people with, with the gospel of Jesus Christ because he looked down and saw us as, as civilized individuals who have it all together. That's a lie. See, we believe that because we have our forefathers and leading up to, the, to today, we have as white evangelicals, or you as white evangelicals, have ignored the truth of who our black brothers and sisters were prior to slavery. Because see, if you do some research, you'll find out some great incredible facts that actually make us as white evangelicals look a bit more historic and caveman-ish than they themselves. So in all truth and honesty, Jesus did not come for us. Therefore, if he did not come for us, why do we think that he has equipped us or granted us or given us or ordained us to be this white supreme race? That the only reason that we have an opportunity to the truth of the Bible, which now you've turned into Christianity, was because his own children rejected him. And so therefore, when he invited everybody, you know, to come because his own rejected coming to the banquet, we were blessed to have an opportunity to come. 
So let me read a, a little bit when I've done some research. It says, Jesus came to all the people of the world as the Savior, but however, during his human life, he came specifically and only for the people of Israel. If any culture on earth should have been able to recognize the Messiah, it should have been his own people because throughout Israel, throughout our black brothers and sisters' history, if you do your research, they were the ones that were the chosen people, so they are the ones that knew more than us whites about the Messiah. Because they, they, not us, were given the word of the Most High Yah, the word of God. Um, including the many prophecies about the Messiah. They had been beaten down by Rome and other powerful invaders. So Israel should have been looking for the promised one and eager to welcome him. God gave to those who he had created for the entire world. And Jesus came as a man directly to Israel. And yet he was rejected, hated, and eventually killed by those same very people. The one group of people who should have welcomed him were the ones who called for his death. This is part of the gospel message that even when we claim to be seeking God's will, we tend to turn away from it in order to go our own way. And that is exactly what you, my white evangelical family members, are doing. You're doing exactly what God's chosen people did when he directly came to them because they, they, they saw that they needed a physical savior and that's what they wanted and Jesus was not fitting that role. He was not coming to free them from the Roman Empire that they were in bondage or oppressed from. See, and now you are calling on a white savior by the name of President Trump to free you from the threat. You're not even in bondage, but from the threat. You're not even in oppressed, but the threat of it. You can't even handle the threat of it. You act in the way you act in and full of anger and full of, of evil in your heart towards our black brothers and sisters and immigrants that you want to build a wall, that you want to do this and this and this to control it, to make America great again, to make white people in control again. Even the threat, perceived threat of that. Look at how you behave. And yet you claim to be the people of the book. You, the people that God granted you through Jesus Christ the privilege to share this glorious gospel across the world. But yet, <laughs> you are rejecting it because you're rejecting the life of, of the Messiah for your own way of white supremacy, which is Christianity. But see, it's been kind of camouflaged all these 400 years because number one, you've been large and in charge. And now that you are feeling threatened, the reality of who you really are is coming out, just like Esau. Esau didn't give a flip about God or, or being the firstborn. He did not care. That's why he so easily gave it away for a bowl of uh, for a meal. And see, that reality is being shown in you, my white evangelicals' hearts, that in this threat. You know, and this came about because I saw a, a post from several white evangelicals that showed this white Jesus holding a child with all these children and people around them from all different nations. And, and it says in there that all lives matter. Jesus even showed it, blah, blah, blah. And this is number one. Nobody's arguing to a degree that all lives matter through Jesus Christ, although originally he only came for his people. But after dying and resurrecting and the rejection of his own people rejecting him, then and only then did all lives matter.
But see, the warning of Romans is coming about with you, my white evangelical family members. Don't get arrogant in this season where God has granted you blessings, not because you necessarily deserve it, but because it's a part of his plan in getting the people that rejected him, his own, to become jealous to then want him. But don't grow arrogant thinking that you Gentiles, aliens, strangers, second rate, <laughs> second uh, in line, <laughs> since I did come for my own. Don't get arrogant or prideful or think that you're above the original individuals I came to save during this season. Because if my judgment came upon my very own children who I came for in the first place, my judgment came upon them. Don't be arrogant to think that you, Gentiles, strangers, aliens, white evangelicals, are above my judgment. That's part of that arrogance that I'm telling you about, that white evangelicals believe they are above discipline or judgment or being held accountable by God for the injustices of our hearts, actions, and the nation. Go ahead and test them. Go ahead and believe that you're going to be raptured before this judgment comes. Because Paul said himself, if I discipline my own children for disobedience, wild branch, Gentiles, aliens, strangers, white evangelicals, don't you dare think that you will escape it. So, you know, what I can say, though, is good thing that Jesus Christ wasn't self-centered like white evangelical family members out there. Good thing Jesus wasn't all about make America and America only great. Good thing white or this Jesus wasn't like white evangelicals where it's all about me, 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 me. Because if it was, we would have never been embraced in and you would be suffering. So... Right now, white evangelicals, you are the ones that are rejecting the Messiah. And how do I know that? I look at what you stand for, I look at what you support, and I look at what you're trying to do. Build a wall to keep any fleeing immigrants out. Because remember, it's all about us. This is our nation. We built it. So build a wall. Keep them out. Oppress. Degrade. Have injustice in our court system, yet justify it instead of acknowledging it. Trump himself said, I would build a great wall and nobody builds a walls better than me. Believe me, and I'll build them very inexpensively. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border and I'll have Mexico pay for that wall, even in our arrogance. America first. But yet there's scripture in Matthew 19 and 29 that says, The first shall be last and the last shall be first. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. So go ahead and put America first. Because then, in the season of the judgment of the Most High, Yah, you will end up finding yourself last. Nobody that left or leaves their homes and brothers and sisters in this for the sake of him will lose it, but will inherit it, inherit much in this life and eternal life. It doesn't look like even if, if this, this turmoil is causing you as white evangelicals to leave your homes. 
Well, if you're a believer and you're going to carry with you the gospel and the good news of the most of Jesus Christ that you say that you love and serve, then even without your homes, the glory and the joy would be all about you because you know that in doing so, you will inherit in this life and yet eternal life. But see, you're not about your father's business. You're not about the true truth of the gospel. You are about Christianity, the religion of white superiority. And in that white superior mindset, you think that we were created as the supreme race. But I hate to tell you, when your Jesus came to this earth, he didn't come for you. And the only reason why he has opened the door to you and I is because his original intended audience rejected him. And therefore they faced punishment. And now you white evangelical family members are rejecting him to pursue and pledge your allegiance to Christianity, the, the, the religion of white superiority. And guess what? As Romans says, your judgment is now upon you. I'm not your enemy. Truth is not your enemy. The truth will set you free. Your enemy is the hidden bias, hatred, anger, dislike, however you want to word it, word it dislike so you don't feel so bad when I say hate. But none of that should be there. And if it wasn't there, your actions, your Facebook posts would be clear to where your heart is. For out of our actions, faith is dead without works. Your works should indicate where your faith is. Is your faith in Christianity, the God of white superiority, or is your faith in the truth of Jesus Christ? Yahshua HaMashiach, Yah, the true God that actually is going about defeat the God of white supremacy. And that is what you're seeing about to hit here in the United States of America. Not because of our black brothers and sisters, not because of immigrants, and not because in the eyes America is not staying strong in first place. But we will fall because of our arrogance, of our hate, of our pride, of our self-centeredness, of our love for ourselves and putting ourselves above and on top of others. Everything opposite of the lifestyle of the Jesus you say you serve. But see, at one point you cannot serve two masters. You will love the one and hate the other. That is why you love the God of white supremacy that is displayed through your flag, which is displayed through your national anthem, which is displayed through the Pledge of Allegiance, which is displayed when you stand when that, uh, that, that pledge or that uh, anthem is being played. That's where and who the God you serve. Serving Jesus Christ in the way that he lived is not your savior. At least be honest with yourself. Don't deflect your emotions on those of us who are speaking this truth. But reflect on your own heart. Acknowledge it. And if you don't want, that's fine. If you want to remain in an ignorant, fearful, hatred place, then do so. That's not going to affect me. That's going to affect you. That's not going to affect what's about to happen or change or stop. It's only going to bring you the opposite of freedom.
but bondage, death, sorrow, pain and misery and suffering. But I lay before you, the Most High Yah says, life and death, blessings and curses you choose. So I say unto you, you choose. You're going to continue to live your life, white evangelicals, rejecting Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, and the life that he taught us to live, and therefore face the judgment? Or are you going to repent by acknowledging what really lies in your heart when it comes to anything or anyone that you feel stands against your desire to uphold the God and the race of white supremacy? Choose this day whom you will serve. You can only serve one. And your actions, your behavior, or your lack of reveals where your heart is. But even if it doesn't, <laughs> the Most High Yah God will not be mocked. A man will reap what he sows. He knows what lies in the depths of your heart. And that is why some of you are going to be shocked in the days to come, when your prayers and your belief in the God of Christianity, white superiority, does not come through for you. To him that has an ear, I hope you can hear. Shalom.